on the labor front, a story that may hit close to home. This is it. The Television News Writers Union has so far failed to come to a negotiated agreement with the Association of Independent Television Stations. With the strike deadline set for 6 p.m. tomorrow night, a news writer walkout appears to be a distinct possibility. I'm surprised he can read the copy with my tear stains all over it. <laughs> I'll be back tomorrow with the news. Or without the news if we go on strike. Murray, if you guys go on strike, I think we'll be able to muddle through without you. Sure you will, Lou. Ted is able to muddle through even when we're here. Hey, you, you're both talking as though there's definitely going to be a strike, and you don't know that for sure. But do you? You never can tell. Don't forget that big television strike in 61. And that one lasted four months. My picket sign turns yellow. <laughs> Well, another big hour put to bed. Well, you put your audience there anyway. <laughs> hey, Murray, what's the latest on the strike, man? Uh, strike? What strike? Ted, you just read about it on the air. Oh, really? I wasn't listening. The news writers, Ted, they're probably going to go on strike. Hey, Gordy, you don't really think there'll be a strike, do you? Well, I sure hope not. Why? That's not your union. Yes, it is. I write my own weather reports. You see, Gordo, that's a mistake I never make. I never write anything. Nobody here has seen me write anything, have they? <laughs> you don't hear many people bragging about being illiterate. <laughs> Hi, everybody. Oh, hey, Al, have you heard anything about the strike? Heard anything? That's all I've heard all day long. I'm on a negotiating committee, and I just got out. So what did you hear? I don't know. <laughs> it's too close to me. Have you guys heard any rumors? Oh, not in the last five minutes. Boy, it's sure a bad time for us to think about striking. Why is that? Because it's snowing outside, and I don't like to pick it in slush. Snowing? Yeah, it's really coming down. Mary, see you in a minute. Coming, Mr. Grant. You know, Mary, I don't care what anybody says. I predict there's going to be a settlement. There, you see, you guys, that's what I'm trying to tell you. Gordy knows what he's talking about. Of course, I'm the guy that predicted fair and warmer today, too. <laughs> Sit down, Mary. You know what we are? Well, we're, uh, we're, uh... Management. When there's a strike, management is expected to report to work. Then, then you do think there'll be a strike, huh? I'm not saying that. But I remember the first time I had to cross a picket line. Like you're going to. Soon. <laughs> I felt rotten. They were all my friends. Guys I'd spent long hours with. They were booing me. <laughs> swearing at me. Well, I had to do it. Was that the big television strike in 61? No, that was a big bartender strike in 59. <laughs> Come bearing food. Good. I am starved. What'd you bring? A salad. Rhoda, you distinctly said that you were bringing leftovers. That's what was left over. <laughs> All we got is two salads, huh? <laughs> Mine's a soggy Caesar. What kind you got? Oh, uh, Waldorf. You know, raisins, nuts, apples. Good. Yours will be dessert. <laughs> Hey, Mayor, I see where there's going to be a strike down at your station. No, no, it's, a, it's not definite. It's more definite than you think. I was down picking up window display cards at the sign shop, mm -hmm. and uh, they were working on the picket signs. Oh, boy. I'm going to feel terrible crossing a picket line with Gordy and Murray in it. You're going to cross a picket line? Well, yeah, I have to. I'm, I'm management. <laughs> You're the first management person anyone in my family has ever socialized with. <laughs> really? I mean it, Mayor. You are the bad guys. Thanks. No, it's true. I come from a long line of labor. The only person in management my father could tolerate was Casey Stengel. <laughs> Go ahead, Rhoda, make jokes. But when I have to cross that picket line, believe me, it's not going to be any fun. Hey, look, Mary, I'm sorry. I know it isn't funny to you. And it's not going to be pleasant what you got to do. But life isn't easy when you're a dirty, rotten scab. Well, what 
Wouldn't you think we'd have heard by now if the strike was on or off? It's on, Mary. I know it's on. There's no use kidding ourselves. I mean, I've been through this before, and I know what it's like. In fact, I'm glad I was in that big strike in 61. But now, I don't care if there's a strike or not. This time, I am prepared. We're on strike. No, no. <laughs> what am I going to do? Mary, look, I have house payments. The kid needs braces. I just bought a new car. I don't know what I'm going to do. A long strike will wipe me out. Oh, Murray, I'm sure it won't be a long one. Hi, guys, what's happening? They're on strike. Here's the wire story. Why are we always the heavies? It's always management's offers, but unions demand. Don't worry about the weather, Gordo. I'll cover that base for you. Ted, how are you going to know what the weather's going to be? You'll tell me. I'll be picketing outside. But that's perfect. You know exactly what the weather's like. Oh, you're a happy man, aren't you, Ted? For sure. I'm not going to be out of a job like... I mean... We want you to know that we in management wish you fellas the best of luck. Right, Lou? Ted, you're not in management. What am I, then? You want to take it, Lou? <laughs> nah, it's too easy. Ted, what are you doing standing around here? You're on the air in 10 seconds. Never fear, Lewis. When you've been doing this as long as I have, you learn to play it right down to the wire. <laughs> all right, guys, we're all leaving now. Murray! No, no, I'm right in the middle of this strike bulletin. Too late. You're on strike. But I'm not finished with it, Al. They'll get the message. So long, Lou. So long. Come on, guys, let's go. Bye, man. Lou. Well, Lou, I guess this is it. Take care of yourself. Well, Mary. Hey, look, Murray, I'm, I'm sure they'll... Mary, it's happened. Just Let's just hope it's not for long, huh? Oh, Gordy, I'm sure it won't be. I'm sure. We'll see you. Hey, good luck, guys. Thanks. I hope you win. Thanks. Well, I do. I hope they win. <laughs> Well, here we are, the six o'clock news team. Plus, Ted. I've just been handed this bulletin. Here in the Twin Cities, negotiations broke down between the Association of Independent Television Stations and the television news writers. The strike is now official, having begun just moments ago. Though union leaders are meeting at this moment with representatives of... <laughs> Representatives of, uh, of those other people who are <laughs> just having begun moments ago here in the Twin Cities, where negotiations broke down just moments ago. <laughs> Repeating that story. Mary, I think he's stuck. Would you go out there and nudge him into the next story? I'd do it, but I'm afraid I'd nudge him into the next building. What do you say, management? Well, you were right, Mr. Grant. You said crossing a picket line wasn't going to be any fun. <laughs> they give you a hard time? Well, I started to cross the picket line, and some guy from another station started to make a couple of smart remarks, so mm -hmm. Gordy told him to shut up, and he wouldn't, so uh, Gordy went after him, and, uh, well, I just wanted to prepare you. Prepare me for what? Well, when Gordy went after him, he handed me his picket sign. So? So, there was a newspaper photographer there, and... Uh, <laughs> There may be a shot of me in tomorrow's paper holding a sign that says, You stink. Those picket lines. Dad, what happened? They rough you up? No, I got dirty going up the fire escape. You climbed nine floors up the fire escape? Ten, really. I lost count and overshot. <laughs> I'm not looking forward to that trip down, I can tell you that. Well, Ted, look at it this way. On your way down, there's very little chance that you can overshoot the ground floor. I don't know, it'll be pretty dark out there. Well, say, Lewis, 
about the show tonight. I'd just soon not wing it again. Uh, are you going to write the news? No, Mary is. I am? Oh, really? How great for you. What a terrific opportunity. I just know you're going to do a crackerjack job. <laughs> Lou, talk to you a minute. <laughs> Lou, 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 what are we doing here? That girl's no news writer. Ted, it all balances out. Mr. Cran, I agree with Ted. Why don't you write the news? I agree with Mary. Well, I'd like to. Good, it's settled. But I can't. The technicians just walked out in support of the news writers. I'm going to be number two cameraman on the Chuckles the Clown show. <laughs> Who's more important, me or some dumb clown? <clears throat> hmm. Newsroom? Yes? They did? Oh, wow. Yes, yes, I'll tell him. Thank you. Astra is honoring the picket line, too. Oh. Who's he? <laughs> Ted, AFTRA is your union, the American Federation of Television and Radio Artists. Artists? I've never drawn a picture in my life. I'm no artist. Ted, the point is, you are going on strike, too. You mean I won't be Anchorman tonight? Nope. You mean the show's not going to be on tonight? They're going to have to get someone to replace you. But they can't do that. I never even wanted to join a union. I'm an individualist. The union's never done anything for me. I mean, they just can't do it. Well, Ted, they've done it, and there's nothing you can do about it. I can complain to my union. <laughs> Newsroom. Just a minute, please. Mr. Grant's for you. See, oh. Mary, I can't do it if you don't tell anyone. No, yeah. Ted. Yes, I can put on a mustache. Ted, they'd recognize your voice. I'll talk funny. <laughs> Who are we going to get, Mr. Grant? Well, whoever it is that can't use my blazer. It wouldn't matter, Ted. It won't fit the person who's filling in for you anyway. Oh, no. Oh, Mr. Grant... Hey, you don't mean it. It's going to be... No. Oh. Well, who then? Me. <laughs> you? Me. On the air? Me. The measure to lower the legal drinking age is now before the legislature where the 18-year-old bill is not expected to pass. Hi. Mr. Grant, why aren't you in makeup? Are you go on in just a few minutes. I didn't have time, remember? I had to do camera on the Chuckles the Clown show. <laughs> Who did they get to replace Chuckles? His producer. Boy, you know, I just, I can't picture Herb Bernstein in a clown suit. I've been looking at him for a half hour and I still can't picture him. <laughs> well, you see, there's something, Mr. Grant. At least you don't have to go out on the air and make a fool of yourself. I don't want to talk about it. <laughs> Let's see what you've been doing here. Are you a little bit nervous? No, why? Because there's nothing written on that paper you're reading. Mary, I'm gonna level with you. I'm a little bit scared to death. My hands get clammy if I have to talk to more than six people at a time. Here, feel them. Well, that's I. Feel them. I, uh... Have you ever felt clammier hands than that? <laughs> And those are just my hands. <laughs> Can you imagine what the rest of me is like? I'm just one big walking clam. I don't want to talk about it. Let's go over this. Uh, some of it might need a little punching up, but, uh, you know, I think on the whole, you'll find it pretty readable. This isn't the story. It's the world's longest sentence. <laughs> Doesn't that typewriter have any periods? We, you think it's a little long? The wind and water-swept victims of the tidal wave looked stoically upon the flooded remains of their town and stood in silent awe at nature's rage as the evacuation continued with local schoolhouses used as Red Cross centers. Well, I was just trying to make it interesting. Mary, a tidal wave is pretty interesting all by itself. It doesn't need your help. That was my best story. Your best story? Ah, uh, my hair just went clammy. <laughs> The measure to lower the legal drinking age is now before the legislature, 
where the 18-year-old bill is not expected to pass. Ah, that's all wrong. It sounds like the bill is 18 years old. Well, I'm doing the best I can. Oh, boy. That's all I need. One great thing about Murray. I could yell at him, but he never cried on me. Hey, Lou. Huh? Come on, hurry up, will you? You're on the air in a minute. Hey, her, why don't you do the news for me? No chance, Lou. I'm already doing four shows. Mr. Grant, you're going to be just fine, just fine. Just yeah. go in there and be natural and uh, remember to smile. You can't have both things, Mary. Look, I'll have that legislature story for you before the end of the show. I'll never make it to the end of the show. Mr. Grant, your news. Oh. For those of you who are not aware of it, we are in the midst of a strike. So management personnel have been filling in for the striking performers. Um, now for the six o'clock news. Substituting for Ted Baxter, Lou Grant. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. This is Lou Grant with the six o'clock news. The news headlines tonight. <laughs> Lawmakers in St. Paul tonight approach a long debated tax. <laughs> Majority Leader Kath Olson says that he has a necessary the most comprehensive tax reform. <laughs> Forty years. <laughs> <laughs> and when the sound boom came down in the picture, Lou looked like he was going to bite it. <laughs> His hand was shaking so hard. He looked like he was fanning himself with the cop. <laughs> and how about when he burped? <laughs> Two scotches, Harry. Mary, you want anything? <laughs> Hi, Mary. Hi. Lou, how are things on the inside? Oh, fine. So, I guess you guys caught me on the air, huh? What do you mean? Uh, did you take Ted's place or something? No kidding. Uh, how'd it go? <laughs> Pretty good. You should have seen him, really. He was, he was just... <laughs> Mr. Grant, they're not laughing at, at you. They're uh, laughing at the... <laughs> <laughs> What about you, Mary? Are you laughing at the situation, too? We're not laughing at you, Mr. Grant. We are laughing... Uh... With me. <laughs> but, Mary, I'm not laughing. <laughs> so I've got to do it all over again tomorrow night. <laughs> Okay, guys, I've got this whole thing worked out. Mary Lou, you can listen to this, too. Shove over, Gordy. You want to sign this, Gordo? It's a petition. I've got the perfect compromise to end this strike. This I got to hear. What is it, Ted? Simply this, that your union accepts management's offer. Ted, management's offer is no pension plan, no health insurance, and a cut in pay. It's only a small cut. No chance, Ted. How about a drink, Mr. Baxter? Are you kidding, Paul? I'm out of work. I can't afford it. I'll buy you a drink, Ted, and I'll have another one. Oh, really? Uh, I'll have the usual, Paul. All right. A double scotch and a cream de menthe frappe. Uh, Paul, give me one of those hard-boiled eggs, too, will you? <laughs> Boy, suddenly I, I feel so relaxed. Look, no clams. I'm a big cucumber, cool and dry. I sure wish I could do the news now. I saw you do the news, Lou. You were terrible. <laughs> I know. That's because I made a mistake. What's that, Lou? 
I started drinking after the show. <laughs> you want, Mary? Mr. Grant, I am going to say something to you now, and I hope you realize that I mean no disrespect whatsoever. I understand how you feel about your authority in the newsroom, and I would do nothing to circumvent that... <laughs> Mr. Grant! Now, what did you want to say, Mr. Mary? Mr. Grant, you are in no condition to do the news tonight. No, 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 no. I was in no condition to do the news last night. <laughs> but tonight... Tonight, I'm beautiful. I think you're a little too beautiful to go on. Thank you. Mr. Grant, what I mean is I can't let you... Uh, can't let me what? Go on. Huh? Due to the fact that you are not in possession of your faculties, I am taking charge of the newsroom. As long as you're in charge, would you help me on with my coat? Mr. Grant! Thank you. Look, Mr. Grant, you could lose your job. I am very sorry, but I cannot let you pass. Okay, go ahead. Go on. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. This is Lou Grant with the Six O'Clock News. Quints were born in Caracas, Venezuela. New tariff talks in Geneva, and a new highway for the Twin Cities. Mrs. Estelle Arandiera, by his 10th month, is expected to go to jury sometime next week. I'll be back with a wrap-up of the late news headlines and the weather for the Twin Cities after this message. Blast is my secret. How am I doing? Oh, Mr. Grant, just great. Yeah. Oh, you're so cool and professional. Thank you. Where, where are you going? I'm going in to get a little more professional. <laughs> well, uh, listen, Mr. Grant, let me uh, uh, fix a cup of coffee. How about that? Mr. Grant, you know, you, you've only got about 30 seconds. I tell all my neighbors. Uh, Mr. Grant, you better hurry up. Mr. Grant, you want to wake up? <laughs> This is Herb Bernstein, <clears throat> uh, uh, substituting for Lou Grant, substituting for Ted Baxter and the news. The news isn't too bad tonight. Drink it, Mr. Grant. It'll, it'll make you feel better. Lou, uh, Mary, have you heard the news? The strike is over. Oh, that's terrific, Mr. Grant. Did you hear I that? I heard, I heard. Boy, I, I feel so good, I think I'll celebrate. <laughs> Harry? Drinks for everyone on me. Oh, wow. Isn't that terrific? <laughs> I can't believe it. Hey, we got it. Oh. Oh. 